Got a Photoshop question? Brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. It's Ask Dave. This time around the question comes from Merle Harris who asks, what do the blend if sliders do? And what he's referring to, and I'm just going to use this example here, a fairly basic one, just so you can kind of see what's happening, is when you double click or go to the layer style, not to a particular layer style, but this part at the bottom here where it says blend if. And you'll see there's two sliders, this layer and underlying layer. This layer, of course, means the layer I'm currently on, which is one that has the gradient, and then underlying layers, whatever layers below. So what this allows me to do is to say, instead of making the whole gradient see-through by using the opacity like this, where you see the whole thing is becoming see-through, when you click on one or other end of these sliders, you're saying take the bright values and make them see-through, or take the dark values and make them see-through. So you can either go to the layer you're on and start playing with these sliders, or, or I should say and or, you can go to the underlying layer and say make the layer below start to kind of push through. So you're really making the top see through but based on the underlying information. Now the one little trick to this is normally when you, if you look really closely at this edge here, let me zoom in a little bit, you can see that it's, it's got a pretty jagged edge because it's very pixel specific. So if you hold down the option key on the Mac Alt for Windows, you can actually split the triangle in two halves and now you see you're getting a much softer transitional kind of a zone here. So that's kind of the basics of what this is for. One thing I always mention to people is just be careful because if you leave these blend if sliders and click OK, you'll see there's nothing on the layer to indicate you've done anything other than if you look really closely and see on the layer there's still a gradient and on the actual image you're missing the black part. Now the other thing is we haven't made those pixels go away, we've just made them transparent because if, for example, I added a stroke, you'd see the stroke, as far as it's concerned, there's still a rectangle here. So anyway, that's kind of the theory of what this is for. Now, what would you do with it? Well, here's an example where I want to, like in a magazine cover, make her head in front of the word hair. Well, if you look, the background layer is solid, so I'd, I'd have to extract her off the background, which I might end up having to do. But what I would try is this. Go to the blend if sliders, take the underlying layer and start to move this slider and look at the way her hair is suddenly pushing and looking like it's in front of the word. And if I do that option or alt split thing, I can probably get a pretty nice result pretty darn quickly. Look at that. That's pretty cool. And that's not really me doing anything other than moving a slider. The advantage of the blend if slider is you can try something very quickly and see if you're going to get a result. If you don't, you can try something else. But that's kind of why we use these because it's an interesting way to do things quickly. Here's an example that I got from my friend Corey Barker who created this gradient using filters and he wanted to make it kind of look like it was coming through the word. Well, once again, that would be pretty difficult to do. But if we just double click on here and take the underlying layer start to pull it through. It looks pretty ugly unless we hold down that option or alt key and start to split and all of a sudden we can get this beautiful gradient thing, this blend coming through and frankly I don't know how else you would do that in Photoshop. It would be so much more difficult. So I put blend if sliders right up there as something to try. It doesn't always do what you want because it's kind of all or nothing but it's a great other tool to have at your disposal just to see if it can help you get the effect that you want. Ask your short Photoshop question using the contact form here at Kelby TV or through Twitter at Dave Cross. Thanks for watching Ask Dave, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals and the Dave Cross Workshops. We'll see you next time.